Kia ora Year 12 and Year 13. This is probably the last scholarship calculus video for this year, and it's a really, really old one from 1974. It's a straightforward little complex numbers question. So also a good one to watch if you're doing Level 3. It's the kind of thing you might get as an excellence question. If I had a bit more time, I'd um, do this in GeoGebra. And if you're um, working through this, you might want to open up Desmos or GeoGebra and see what's going on graphically. It's a locus problem, really. Um, we have to prove that if we've got the modulus of a complex number Z, so we're given that Z is a complex number, so that's one way to write that, then um, the argument of 1 plus Z over 1 minus Z is plus or minus pi on 2. So let's see what on earth that all means. Well, what it means is that if we take a complex number that's on the unit circle, then once we manipulate it as follows, we add 1 to it, whoop, add 1 to it, and then divide it by 1 minus the number, then we end up sitting on this axis up here, so the argument being positive pi on 2, or this axis down here, which is negative pi on 2. Right, and we're not looking at the argument of z, we're looking at the argument once we've done stuff to z. So there's no reason that it's still going to be sitting on the unit circle. Um, but if you have a think about that before you start, you will realise what you're trying to do with the question. And in order to have the argument be plus or minus pi on 2, that means that we're trying to show that the real part of 1 plus z over 1 minus z is equal to 0. Okay, so if we can show that, then we go back to this graph and we say, hey, we're done. Right, so let's start off as we usually do by defining z. So let z equal x plus iy, or you could use a plus ib, or whatever you want to use. It doesn't matter. I always use x and y when I'm doing locus problems, um, but you don't have to. So let's substitute that in now. Let's say, what do we get when we do 1 plus z over 1 minus z? Sorry about the background noise. Got some extra kids in the house. So we've got 1 plus x plus iy over 1 minus x plus iy. So we're going to clean that up by collecting up the real bits and collecting up the imaginary bits. So just think about it like this. And as usual, we're going to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. I really don't know why this was a scholarship question, because it's just not that bad. Um, what am I doing? Right. Okay, so we're going to um, do the denominator first, and we get our usual pattern, 1 minus x squared plus y squared. And then up here, we'll just go term by term. Okay, so that's those ones multiplied. Um, plus 1 minus x y times i, so that's those two done, plus 1 plus x y i, that's those two, and lastly we'll have minus y squared. Okay, so it's minus y squared because, uh, I've done it again, i squared is negative 1. All we have to do is to clean all of that up, so we're going to collect up real and nominal stuff. So we get 1 minus x squared minus y squared. That's my real part. Plus, uh, let's see what we've got. Well, we've got y minus xy plus y plus xy times i. And a denominator we don't really care about, but we'll pop it in anyway. So that gives me 1 minus x squared minus y squared over this, and then here we get 2y over, oops, battery is running low, must be time to stop, so there we go, okay, now what do we know, well we know that, so we can write, but the modulus of z is equal to 1, so what does it mean for the modulus of z to be 1, well that means that the square root of x squared plus y squared is 1, so x squared 
plus y squared is equal to 1, squaring both sides. So 1 minus x squared minus y squared is equal to 0. Right, so we can think of all of that as a little bubble out the side. So we have 1 minus z over, or 1 plus z over 1 minus z is equal to 0 plus this. Right, so the real part of 1 plus z over 1 minus z is equal to 0. Graphically, that means that 1 plus z or 1 minus z is up here or down here. So the argument of 1 plus z over 1 minus z is equal to pi on 2 when we're up here. So that's when 2y over that. Right, when will that happen? Well, that's going to happen when y is greater than 0 because all of that denominator is positive. Right, I've got a squared thing plus a squared thing. And when will the argument be negative pi on 2? Negative pi on 2 when 2y over that is negative, which happens when y is greater than 0. Okay, so we've shown that if the modulus is equal to 1, then the argument of that thing is equal to plus or minus pi on 2 as required. So there you go. Thanks for watching and um, have a good Christmas break. Try not to do too much maths if you are the one or two people out there who are still watching videos even though it's the end of December. Um, it's time to stop work until next year. Thanks very much.